I'm sure we've all noticed that different batteries of different qualities and different age and ones that have been crashed or otherwise abused have a different degree of what we might think of as oomph. That is, when you hammer the throttle, does it take off or does it lag? What does that do to? It's due to voltage sag. To assess voltage sag, what we need to do is make a simple version of what this is for car batteries. This is a load tester. What I'm using instead for these 12 volt 3 cell batteries is an inexpensive watt meter and two 12 volt halogen bulbs connected in parallel. Let me show you what happens when I connect this old Sky LiPo battery that's also been crashed to the watt meter and notice that it's giving 12.6 volts which is good voltage but when this modest load is applied of 100 watts notice the voltage drops to 9.5 volts immediately. Now I'll take the somewhat newer Sky LiPo battery that is 12.8 volts unloaded and when I apply the simulated test load it only drops to 12.55. It's maintaining its voltage very well. Now how about this Genzace? Starting at 12.8 volts it drops to 12.5 as well so that's pretty good. So what causes that voltage drop in different batteries when a consistent test load is applied? It's mostly due to what's called internal resistance which is the electrical resistance that occurs actually inside the battery as it creates electricity. In many circumstances you could just use an ordinary ohm meter to measure resistance but since the batteries themselves are creating voltage you can't just hook up your multimeter and measure the resistance. So to determine the internal resistance of the battery you must first measure the voltage with a watt meter, voltage meter, without a load applied and then apply the load which in effect allows you to subtract the resistance caused by the load from the total resistance and what you're left with is the internal resistance of the battery that you're testing. The test that I'm going to show you using the watt meter and the halogen bulb test load is not scientifically precise but when performed on your batch of batteries at a consistent temperature with the same test load it gives you a great idea of the relative health of your batteries both to one another and as time goes on you can recheck your batteries and see where they are in their lifespan and if they're ready to be relegated to slow planes or some other task or just discarded. So all you need to do this test are your 12 volt 3 cell batteries, a watt meter, and a 12 volt load. 100 watts worth of 12 volt bulbs in this case which I've connected in parallel. These also come in 120 volt versions if you do choose to use these as your load be sure that you get the 12 volt version and I've chosen to use 100 watts as my standard load since that's about a medium throttle setting in one of my middle sized motors in my fleet. To do the internal resistance test hook up your fully charged battery and notice the voltage reading. Here I have 12.67. In reality this is more likely to be 12.6 a fully charged 3 cell but these uh, voltage meters are notoriously inaccurate so if it's off a few hundredths that's okay. What's mo more important is the voltage drop, not the absolute voltage. Record the absolute voltage at this point. 12.67 volts. Then apply the known load, this 100 watt bulb, and notice that the first thing that happens is the watt meter goes live, the amperage goes up, and the volts drop. At a certain time, I recommend about 10 seconds, read your voltage at that point under load, 12.22 volts, and the amperage, 7.8 amps. Then disconnect your test load and do the math. 12.67 unloaded volts minus 12.22 volts loaded voltage equals a 0.45 volt drop. Divide that by the amperage draw and that will give you your internal resistance in ohms. Since we usually think of internal resistance in milliohms, multiply that times a thousand and that will get you 57.7 .7 
milliohms. That's your internal resistance for this to all three of these cells of this entire three cell pack. There's an important point to notice after you apply the load the voltage drops fairly precipitously at first and then levels off and that's because over time the voltage starts high, in this case it would be 12.77, it drops off and then plateaus out until the battery is empty and then it drops again. The idea is to measure the difference between zero load and the bottom of this drop off as the plateau begins. In my experience this is usually about 10 seconds in once you've applied the load. In any case choose the same interval and use it each time. So what I do is record the unloaded voltage, apply the load and start counting as the voltage drops down more precipitously and then when it levels off at 10 seconds record that voltage. Now I'll test this Genzase 55C battery. It's got about 50 flights on it. The no load voltage is 12.5 seven four volts apply the hundred watt test load count down ten seconds the loaded voltage is twelve point two eight volts and the amperage is seven point nine amps now the calculations twelve point seven four volts minus the loaded voltage equals 0.46 volts drop divided by 7.9 amps equals 0.058 ohms multiplied by 1000 equals 58 milliohms. Now I'll do a nanotech 45 to 90 C discharge. This one has about 20 flights on it. 12.74 volts is my unloaded voltage. Apply the test load. Counter interval 10 seconds. Record the loaded voltage 12.41 volts at 7.9 amps. And now the math. 12.74 volts minus 12.41 volts divided by 7.9 amps times 1000 equals 41.8 it's a really old battery that I've got several hundred flights on and it's been crashed and abused. I've got it marked with tape so I know not to fly with it. It's drawing, it's generating 12.61 volts unloaded. Apply the load. Now notice the first thing that happens the voltage drops way far off. It's only getting 10 volts and still dropping. At 10 seconds it's 10.14 volts, let's say, and 7.1 amps. And the math shows 12.61 volts unloaded minus 10.14 volts loaded equals a almost 2.5 volt drop. That alone is a problem. Divided by 7.1 amps times 1,000 equals 300. 47.9 milliohms of internal resistance in this battery using this test. So that is a terrible battery with massive internal resistance. I like to use a simple numbering and lettering system on each of my batteries so I can keep track of each one every few months, do the internal resistance and kind of check on its health. What I like to do is keep a spreadsheet, this is in Google Documents, that includes the date, the temperature, not because you have to be super precise, but just to remind yourself to be within a few degrees each test session. I have a column for the batteries, the test load, the battery number, the unloaded volts, the loaded volts, the spreadsheet function, which is the voltage drop, which is the unloaded minus the loaded, the measured amperage, 
and the internal resistance in milliohms, which is the voltage drop divided by the amps times 1000. I'll go through and test each of my batteries at the same test load on the same day and notice that the internal resistance in the 30s range is excellent. These in the uh, 79 and 80s relegated those to non-flying duties and these over 100 were properly discarded. Now take a look at what happens over time. These highlighted in yellow are my Genzace 55C batteries that I tested in September of 2011 and notice the internal resistances are right around 30 milliohms for the pack. Then I retested in December of 2011 and notice a couple of them are nearing 40 and a couple are still in the 20s and then I retested again April 2012 and they're all decidedly above 30 some nearing the 50 milliohms range. This is after about six months and about 50 to 60 flights each. Also notice that the amperage changes from session to session primarily. Generally on the same test session it's about the same but because the amperage changes a little bit, it's best not to rely on the voltage drop alone to test the health of your battery, but rather to go ahead and do the calculation for the actual internal resistance in milliohms. Here's a test where I used three different loads, 50, 100, and 150 watts, corresponding to one, two, and three 12 volt halogen bulbs. Notice the increased voltage drop as additional load was applied, and also notice the internal resistance does change with the load. Therefore it's important to choose a test load and use that same one each time. It's also interesting that with a 2200 milliamp hour battery that these test loads correspond roughly to a 2C, a 4C, and a 6C discharge rate. Industry standard testing for internal resistance is apparently 1C, but that's not a real life situation. I find that these higher discharge rates more simulate actual flying conditions and therefore are more valuable to me testing my LiPo batteries. Here's a test where I use the same battery but different temperatures. Here's room temperature 76 degrees Fahrenheit and the internal resistance was 40 which is perfectly respectable. The exact same battery taken out of the refrigerator at 36 degrees Fahrenheit the internal resistance is 138 which is nearly three and a half times higher. The voltage drop you can see is quite large over a volt drop on a modest load at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. This is why when you fly in cold weather your batteries don't respond the same. Designing the spreadsheet is really easy with the wattage entered, your battery number, unloaded and loaded volts which you enter, voltage drop is unloaded minus loaded, amps is entered, internal resistance is voltage drop divided by amps times 1000. But if you'd like me to email you a blank version of this please leave a note and I will do my best to email these to as many guys as I can.